guess what? Do you want to hear a secret? I'm going to tell you the five R's of intergenerational wealth that have been hidden and have been making rich people wealthy for millennia. Let's get into the show. All right. So if you want to be rich, I'm going to break it down into five easy steps so that you can enter into intergenerational wealth. And they are the five R's of intergenerational wealth. So they are resources, relationship, revelation, revenue, and riches. All right. And I'm going to break down each category with an example and from scripture of how you can enter into intergenerational wealth. So this is going to come from Matthew 6, verses 31 through 33. All right. So um, it says, therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or wherewith shall we be clothed? For after all these things do Gentiles seek for your heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for your for tomorrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Right? So um, there's an amazing book by John Brevere. It's called The Fear of the Lord. Um, in The Fear of the Lord, um, it has promises of divine protection, clarity, direction, riches, honor, and life, right? So the Lord is like, hey, love God, keep his commandments, and you will be wealthy. And I'm going to tell you what seeking first the kingdom of God looks like in his righteousness and how these things, when it comes to intergenerational wealth, gets added unto you, all right? Let's start with seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Christ's righteousness is his finished work on the cross. Jesus Christ came in the flesh and he was crucified for every sin you have ever done, right? Because we are evil, we are sinful, we are not good people, but we must be born again and we must repent and turn away from our sin and turn back to God, turn back to the Bible and receive um, his finished work on the cross. Jesus died and was buried and he was in the grave for three days. And the father raised him from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit, right? And he resurrected um, and was shown to the 500 uh, witnesses and to his disciples. And he said to wait here, I will send you a comforter. I will endow you with power on high and you will be my witnesses. And so this is the promise that he has given to the world for the world cannot receive the Holy Spirit grace. Um, but um, only believers, only Christians can receive the blessed Holy Spirit. Right. And this is how we get born again. And this is how we enter into intergenerational wealth because God is a God of covenant to his children, not to servants, not to orphans, not to unbelievers or anyone who is not Christian. And that's just is what it is, right? So I have entered into his righteousness by being born again and by confessing with my mouth that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, that I shall be saved. And I have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit by asking, Father, in the name of Jesus, baptize me with your Holy Spirit. Boom. And now I have received the seal of his salvation as listed out in Ephesians 1. All right. Now I am in his righteousness. I have sought first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So I'm going to give you examples of what the five R's of revenue, relationships, revelations, resources, and riches um, looks like in the life of a believer, right? So we're going to start first with revenue, right? So example, I'm just going to use examples from my life because that's, that's all I got. Um, I was in a Bible study in a prayer night with my friends, right? And we we're at my house and I was like, hey, I want to do mission work, evangelism, be a missionary for God. I just want to make videos, um, pray for people, read my Bible, right? But I need money um, to do that. But I did not ask God for money because number one, the Lord says that um, a slack hand maketh one 
impoverished, but a diligent hand maketh one rich, right? Um, you will obtain wealth and resources and riches from um, being in the will of God, being obedient to him and being faithful and being diligent, right? But um, you have to know what type of avenue the Lord will provide for you, right? So we pray that prayer in Bible study on Wednesday night. I think on Thursday or Friday of that week, I get an email from Google and Google says to me, hey, we have a new program. We're going to give you $4,000 in Facebook ads, right? I mean, uh, for Google ads for free, right? Um, so right there, um, I did not have money. The Lord gave me money. And so it came through prayer and also came through, it says where two or more agree on earth. It shall be established in heaven and also where two or three are gathered in my name. I am in the midst. Right. So when you have the atmosphere of the presence of God and the Holy Spirit, miracles happen and the Lord gave it unto me. And also, I want to make a really big distinction here of like, hey, um, what actually happened? I tried to get this program to everybody. I was like, hey, Google's giving out four thousand dollars. Google's giving out four thousand dollars, so on and so forth. Nobody could get this program but me. Like, I am so serious, right? So I asked Google, I uh, hit them up. I was like, hey, how long have you been running this program? They told me we have never ran this program before with this much money. We usually have only given out $150 in the past. And we have only been running this program for two or three weeks, right? So, boom, the Lord gives it unto me. But the important thing here is the Lord gave me $4,000. But what did he lay out in his scriptures? He laid out in his scriptures of like, hey, um, look how I fed the 4,000 and the 5,000, right? Sit down <laughs> and just worship God, right? And give thanks unto God, right? So um, the Lord um, will give you um, revenue when you just worship him and you just thank him, right? So um, that's first R when it comes to right? These are the next two R's, revelation and relationships. So I am praying to the Lord. I am praying regular prayers, right? So um, the Bible says that you need to um, pray for leaders, uh, people in power for your country, uh, pray for the peace of Jerusalem so that um, your house will prosper. And I think overall, that one was the one uh, where I, I heard from the Lord, right? Um, because it says in Isaiah 60, the Lord marveled that he could not find an intercessor, right? So when it says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. One thing that you need in your life is to be concerned with whatever God is concerned about. Like whatever the Lord want to talk about in the prayer closet, um, pray on that thing. And you have to align yourself. If you're a Christian, you're a believer, we are aligned with Israel and we are aligned with Jerusalem. Um, and this is God's chosen place, right? And it's not Palestine. I'm just going to let y'all know. Uh, so you need to believe like a Christian. All right. And so as I am praying for the peace of Jerusalem and the peace of Israel, right? The Lord says to me, RSI. Right. So I don't know what RSS, I don't know what RSI is or whatever that is. And so this is the spirit of prophecy, the spirit of revelation. There are nine spiritual gifts listed out in First Corinthians nine. They are words of wisdom, words of knowledge, tongues, interpretation of tongues, prophecy, healing, miracles, faith and discernment of spirits. Right. So the important thing of um, seeking first his righteousness is that you have the Holy Spirit. You're not going to get these type of revelations or insights if you have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit so that you can just know a whole bunch of stuff that the Lord wants to reveal to you, right? And also we see in Matthew 6, it says that you need to ask, seek, and knock. Ask and you shall uh, receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. The Lord will not give to you um, if you do not ask, it's just the rules or the principles of the kingdom, right? But um, I don't pray or I'm inconsistent or whatever. Then your life is going to be how your life is. But you need to ask the Lord like, hey, um, I don't know what this means, Lord. Um, give me wisdom. So 
Um, when I found out that RSI is an indicator when it comes to investing in stocks, options, and um, essentially like day trading and so on and so forth, um, I was like, hey, Lord, I don't know what this means. Send somebody to teach me how to invest, right? I think I was praying on a Wednesday. I think my friend called me on Thursday. She was like, or she texted me. She said, hey, um, do you want to learn how to invest? I was like, yo, I just prayed about this, right? So she taught me how to invest and I started investing. And th through investing, I went from making $20 an hour at a regular like nine to five job or whatever um, to making $20 a minute or $1,000 a day, $500 a day to almost like $5,000 um, or $4,000 a day, right? And so again, this came from Revelation and this is the um, the fear of the Lord. Um, it gives you wisdom, right? So this is um, James 1. It says like, hey, um, any man lack wisdom, ask of the Lord for wisdom and he'll give to you liberally, right? And so um, sometimes that wisdom comes from yourself via revelation or it'll come through other people through relationships. So again, um, the three R's of um, intergenerational wealth have been revenue, revelation, and relationships. Um, the next one we have are resources, right? So in short, I started getting um, working um, and getting money. And I was like, hey, I need a retirement, right? So um, I was like, hey, Lord, um, I need a retirement. Where should I put my money, essentially, right? And you know what's very interesting? Um, sometimes, I'm not saying this all the time, I'll open your mouth because life and death is in the power of the tongue. I don't know if I actually asked the Lord, like, hey, where should I open a retirement account? But I was wondering this in my spirit, right? And then the Holy Spirit told me um, fidelity, right? And so um, as I am living in my life, I listen to a bunch of podcasts and other um, business finance YouTubers. The day that um, I heard fidelity from the Lord, every finance user, I mean, um, YouTuber that I listened to made a video about fidelity that day. I was like, okay, oh, that's the Lord bit, right? But the Lord gave me revelation first. So I put a thousand dollars in my retirement account because I'm like, Hey, I'm in my twenties. Let me start building for retirement. So, um, a couple weeks or months later, right? This is the Holy spirit telling me this. The Holy spirit said, essentially give the thousand dollars. I'm like, give the thousand dollars. I literally just um started a retirement account. You actually get a fee for pulling out your um out your money in a Roth RIA too soon. You're supposed to let that thing sit. And so I was like, man, this don't make no sense. I was supposed to get the tax benefit. This ain't the Lord at all. Right. And so um when I went to church that day, um uh, beforehand, I called my friend. I was like, bro, I think the Holy Spirit wants me to give away this thousand dollars. Essentially, like, what should I do? And while we were talking, we were like, hey, if anything ordinary happens at church, don't give the $1,000. But if anything unordinary happens at church, give the $1,000, and then boom, um, you know it's from the Lord, right? So church is finished. We are being dismissed. We are doing the altar call, and you get to go home, right? As soon as we're about to end, the last thing um, at the church, the apostle says is, Hey, everyone hug one another. We are going to sow a seed of love. I was like, yo, that was God telling me to sow that seed of $1,000. So I gave the $1,000, um, I think the next week or so on and so forth. And what happened next? You could not imagine what happened next. I sowed the $1,000. My YouTube channel got um, blown up. It took off and it got seen by... 3.2 million impressions. And why the 3.2 is so important, um, I have a lot of life verses and um, why fidelity was also important because I have a lot of life chapters and they are Isaiah 61, Isaiah 53, Revelations, Revelation 3 and 20, Galatians 6 and 9, all right? So my video get, get, um, getting shown to three million two hundred thousand people um is revelations chapter three verse 20 um the holy spirit or jesus says i stand at the door and knock 
I'm butchering scripture. Let me actually go to the verse with my Bible. So um, Revelations 3 and 20, it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Right. But the reason fidelity was so important is because um, fidelity means faithfulness. Right. And so my life verse being um, Galatians six and nine says that do not grow weary in well doing for you shall reap a harvest in due season if you do not faint. And so my video took off. It got 100,000 views in three or seven days and it made over two thousand dollars when I sowed a seed of a thousand dollars that the Lord told me to do. So again, um, the Lord says that obedience is greater than sacrifice. And so when I gave that, um, yes, it was a sacrifice, but the Holy Spirit led me to do it. So again, um, no prosperity gospel here, but seed sowing is in the scriptures when it comes to Corinthians, where it says, if you sow sparingly, you shall reap sparing, sparingly, but if you sow bountifully, you shall reap bountifully. And also Solomon, when he obtained his wealth and his riches and his wisdom, he gave a thousand bulls unto the Lord, right? But again, the Lord has to tell you to do this. Uh, don't give out of fear or obligation, but be a cheerful giver. So I gave. So that was uh, revenue. And also out of that, also got a contract with it's very funny, but it's called Thrive, a social media company. And so um, I get like a thousand dollars from them also from doing like really easy social media management. And I think it's not ironic or funny that the company is called Thrive. And I also pray to the Lord like, yo, Lord, I want I don't want to just survive in this life. I want to thrive. Right. And so I'm working part time by making full time money along with like my regular investments and so on and so forth. So um, that was resources. So four hours of intergenerational wealth. It was uh, resources, revelation, revenue, relationships. And the final R for intergenerational wealth are riches. Right. So um, in Matthew six, it says, lay not your treasure on earth where moth and worm devour, but lay up yourself with riches in heaven um, where your heavenly father is. Right. So the worst thing, um, the saddest thing that a person could ever be or have that truly makes them poor is to only have money. Right. And so. Um, the Lord says like, hey, every man's work is going to be tried by fire on the day of judgment, uh, if it be good or evil. So anything that you do in this life, it says like, hey, don't let your right hand um, know what your left hand is doing. Um, give to people who cannot repay uh, for you uh, or to you. Um, help the poor, help the widow, help the orphan. Uh, for your father who heareth in secret will reward you openly. Right. So in this life, it says anyone who has uh, forsaken riches, possessions, lands, families for my sake will receive a 100 times in this life with persecution and eternal life in the life to come. Right. So you have to build a spiritual life where you are building up things where only God knows. No other person knows what you're doing. Only God can repay you. And so you do these things in prayer in secret or giving in secret. Um, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And so those are the far, four, I mean, five R's of intergenerational wealth of riches, revelation, resources, revenue, and relationships. And so this is the kingdom of God of his righteousness, another R, and what it looks like for it to be added unto you. Seek the Lord in prayer. Repent and believe and turn from your sins and just be a good follower of the Lord. All right. So if this video has been helpful to, um, to you, make sure to check out the next video on screen where it's why are evil people rich and God's people broke? And the next video also why you should never pray for money. And so hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and comment below. And if you feel like giving unto your boy for your intergenerational wealth, well, yeah, Lord.